Indiana, my hometown. <laughs> I put the nozzle back in the gas pump. As I did, I noticed there's a sign above the gas tank, and I look at it, and I'm like, oh my god, that guy looks a lot like me. I have never been so freaked out in my entire life. That is true customer service. <laughs> Here's some other examples of ways that you can find the funny in life. Maya Angelou is one of my favorite heroes. She talks about it always trying to be normal. You'll never know how amazing you actually can be. This is not the school uh, to be normal. This is the school to actually discover and rediscover who you truly are. We've all been through drive through as McDonald's where you really can't understand what they're saying because the speaker's kind of broken and messed up, muffled. Next time you go through a drive through get yourself one of these, a kazoo. And I promise you this works every single time. And they say, <laughs> talk to them back. <laughs> the scary thing is they actually can understand you, which is really disturbing. But if you do that, you have to do that at the drive-thru. It's only funny at the drive-thru. I told my dad about it, he got confused, he tried that at the counter, they're like, what's wrong with you? But actually, I got this a couple years ago, I love this thing so much. This is called a magician's blindfold. This is a blindfold that looks like a blindfold, but it's not. It's a magician's blindfold. You can totally see through this thing perfectly fine. It's got mesh on the inside. Like, I'll prove I can see through it. Um, I'll tell you how many fingers I'm holding up. <laughs> Three, thank you. And so I bought this thing. I wore this thing around. I'm telling you right now, I have never had more fun driving in my entire life, right? Driving on the highway, hello, awesome perfect. Or try this out. You can do this next thing by yourself. Or you can do this with your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your kidnapper, whoever, oh my. <laughs> Go to the grocery store and buy one thing. <laughs> buy one grape. That's it, one grape. Put one grape in your cart. <laughs> Wheel it around the store. Get in the express checkup line, because you qualify. Take a break, put the conveyor belt, watch it roll down, and if you don't laugh, they don't know what to do. They have to take you seriously, because one, you're the customer. Two, they can't talk about looking if something's not right. <laughs> so they don't know how much to charge you. I did this one time, the cashier tried to scan the grape. <laughs> Most cashiers try to weigh it. One grape weighs nothing. So to get you out of there, they're like, well, just take it. Take the grape. So if you take it, they then eat it. Go get another one, get back in line. <laughs> Still hungry. By the way, the first person in this school that leaves school today and goes and buys a grape and tweets me a video of you doing it at our Instagram at that, at that, that, this hashtag, buy one grape, I'll mail you a kazoo. So you can go through drive throughs and McDonald's and email me back from prison. That'll be nice. And so again, and if you really want to have a good time with it, check out. People like yourselves have bought videos on Instagram, have bought, bought grapes on Instagram. It is ridiculous to see the number of people. Today is all about finding the funny. Today is about being able to put yourself out there, to not be embarrassed about laughing at yourself when things don't go right. This is a Panera Bread in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's on 86th Street. This is a Panera Bread I don't think I can ever return to again as long as, my, as I'm alive. Here's exactly what happened. A few months ago, I went in there to get some work done. All right, um, first of all, this story's gonna make me look like a total imbecile, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, I used to work for a guy named Larry David. Uh, Larry David is the, the creator, co-creator of Seinfeld. Uh, he has a show on HBO called Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, if you know anything about him, he's the master of uncomfortable situations. I have a lot of Larry David moments, and this is exactly what, what happened. And when, when you have ADHD, you kind of hyperfocus, which means you forget everything going on around you. That's exactly what happened this day. I walked into Panera Bread, and, um, and they have the comfy chairs, you know, the chairs in front of the fireplace uh, to make you feel at home until you put up your own uh, Christmas tree menorah and then they call the police. And so I went in there and I sat down and next to me and the comfy chair, there, were, there was no one there, but I, I saw some keys on the, on the front of the, in front of the chair. So I picked up the keys and I put them on the chair to leave them for whoever left them, thinking they would come back. Okay, this particular day of going up to Panera, typically I drive the Mazda. The Mazda's my car, uh, Scout, my daughter, drives the Jetta. The Volkswagen Jetta to me, uh, her car is a, 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 a landfill, I want nothing to do with it. However, this particular day, 
is the only day that my car could get the tires changed, I had to drive the Jetta. So let me make this clear. I never drive them, I never drive the Jetta, I always drive the Mazda this particular day, and I drove the Mazda. Plus, in her car, you don't even need keys anymore. All you have to do is like be in a seventh state radius and push the magic button and it starts. And so here I go. I'm in Panera, I go to someone left keys at the chair next to me. I pick them up, I put them on the chair, I start working. No one comes for the keys. Maybe like 45 minutes go by, I have to go. So I'm like, well, okay, I'm gonna turn to the keys. I take them, I stand in line. Some of you, I can feel it, already know exactly what's gonna happen here, right? So I'm standing in line, and I'm like, well, I wonder who's left them. I talk to the cashier, oh, she says, can I take your order? Oh, you know what, um, I saw someone turn to these keys, I just wonder, oh, thank you very much. I'll give them to the, to the manager. I said, you know what, you seem really busy. I don't wanna put you out. I think it's best if I talk to the manager. And she goes, no, 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 I think I can handle giving the keys to the manager. I'm like, look, I don't wanna argue with you. Uh, I just think, and she goes, oh my God. So she goes and gets the assistant manager, whatever. And so I gave her the keys, and she goes, oh, thank you. I'll put them in the safe. Okay, fine. So now I go outside the lead, and as I go into the parking lot, I start looking around, and I start to panic, and I'm like, oh my God, someone stole my car. Like, my car's gone, like, gone, gone. Like, it's not around anywhere. And I'm like, who steals a car? Like, I can't believe this has happened. And I'm looking around, Kevin, think straight. What are you talking about? How could someone steal? Okay, I know I parked here. I know I drove. I parked right next to this car that looks like a scout's car. My daughter's, oh, Kevin, you're an idiot. You didn't drive the Mazda. You drove the Jetta. That's her car. Okay, boy, it feels so stupid. Okay, fine. So now it's time to leave. I cannot find the keys. I have no clue where her keys are. And because my ADHD, I'm not thinking straight. I'm not, I'm not putting it in there. So I'm like, okay, where are they? Maybe I left them inside. Maybe I left them inside. So I go inside. I look around the chairs. Nope, not there. I go back outside. I take my little suitcase. I jump into the hood of the car, looking through. Can't find the keys. <laughs> the delivery guy comes out. Hey, is everything okay? Yeah, it's a little embarrassing, but somehow I lost my keys. Oh, well, I was just on the side a second ago, and I overheard someone in the back say that someone turned in some keys. I'm like, oh, those have to be mine. Like someone found my keys. And so like an idiot, I go back inside and I'm standing in line and I wonder who found them, where did I leave them? And as I'm in line, it sets in. I'm like, oh my God, I turned in my own keys. Now, here's the difference between me and you. Most normal people would just simply say, hey, you know what, I can't really explain this. Those keys I gave you are mine and I need to get them back. Nope, not me. I don't have the confrontation gene. I was born without the ability to confrontate. And so I'm standing in line, I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm like, okay, Kevin, this is embarrassing. You know what, she sees a lot of people, maybe she will remember you. I know what I'll do. I'll just pretend like I'm someone else, right? And so as I'm in line, that's my plan, pretend that I'm someone else. I'm third in line. Now I'm second in line, I've committed to the plan, but I have no idea what it's going to look like. I haven't thought that through. So now I'm first in line, and she looks at me, she's like, oh, it's you again. And then out of nowhere, I feel my entire body more into a 95-year-old man. Oh, excuse me, did anyone turn in any keys? And she looks at me, she's like, oh my God, what is happening to you right now? I cannot find my keys. And I realize, Kevin, what is going on? I'm having an out-of-body experience. What are you doing? Well, you're a 95-year-old man. What's going on with your right hand? I said, oh, that's your cane. Your cane? You don't even have a cane. So now you look like some DJ demented rapping grandpa, right? And she goes, are you serious right now? I go, yes, I mean, I cannot find my keys. And she goes, well, as a matter of fact, someone turned in some keys. Oh, that's wonderful. Do you think you can go get those keys for me? And she looks at me. She goes, no, I think it's best <laughs> if you talk to the manager. And so she goes and gets the manager, and the manager comes over, and she intercepts him, and she's trying to explain, sir, this guy that turned in the thing that's getting the keys is the same guy that turned in the keys, but it's not him. Something happened. The guy's crazy. And the, the manager stops and says, oh, no, it's okay. My grandfather's in the home. Oh, my God. And so now the guy walks up to me, excuse me, sir, are these your keys? Yes, yes, that's them. Those are my keys. Shiny, 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 shiny. And so now he hands them to me. I go, where did you find them? He goes, some kind person turned them in. I said, oh, that's wonderful. Make sure you thank that person for me. And as I turned to run out of there, he stops. He goes, sir. And I turned back around. And he goes, thank you. <laughs> and I can never go to Panera again as long as I'm alive. Robert Frost talked about if we can all not laugh, we would all go insane. That's the thing about today. That's what I really love about today is the sense of fun, the sense of celebration, the sense of commonality, the 
sense of the spirit of aloha. Even though I know we do not live in Hawaii, the concept of aloha is what I leave you with. It is the celebration of what it is to make this the best school year ever, the strongest year ever. And the way you do it is by embracing the differences of others. It, there's no more room in this country for tolerance. We were, we're beyond being tolerant. We now have to move to a level of true acceptance and, and love and integrity because if you focus on the fact that we are way more alike than we 